Difficulty in games is not everything, but sometimes it can be the difference between a bland experience or something that you dedicate yourself to. A challenge that once completed will have you craving the feeling that it gave to you. The feeling of trying your absolute hardest and coming just short, only to reset, reassess, and learn in order to get one step further. Then you die, <laughs> again and again. Only when you've beaten this challenge, you are satisfied in your execution or your strategy. Maybe you've outsmarted the game, made it easy by way of exploitation. Maybe you simply beat your head against this challenge until you've reached mastery. Every moment decisive and exact, a choice towards the path of your eminent victory. Unfortunately, difficulty needs to be just right for any of these things to take place. For you to yearn for mastery requires a need for it in the first place. A difficulty that's properly calibrated to the user's skill level or understanding can allow them to operate at the highest level they are capable of. If the player can do that and progress or win, oftentimes that is very fun. Things that are viscerally fun sometimes remove the need for difficulty at all, but can be enhanced by it. Even an easy thing needs some sort of value to remain entertaining for long. One of the main methods that games use to create value is difficulty. We probably would not boot up a trivial game too many times, and we also might lose interest or become frustrated if the game feels unfair or impossible. If you scale the difficulty too far in either direction, the difficulty itself dissolves. It either becomes so trivial, it's impossible for anyone who is trying to lose, or it becomes nearly impossible or actually impossible to win. For example, in a shooter, if we scale the enemy's hitbox so large you are unable to miss, then you set their HP to 1, you've created a triviality simulator where you can only win but it doesn't have any value because it's the only thing that can happen. Now if you make the enemy unable to die, it kills you in one hit, and it can't miss you, then you have a mountain that nobody wants to climb, if they even can. In difficulty, there's definitely a sweet spot. Now in my natural element, I can't be defeated. Unfortunately, there is an archetype of video game that somehow creates an environment for the trivial and impossible to coexist in one giant bland mistake. Unfortunately, again, many of these games manage to be fun enough in other ways to lure you in, only to have you realize that you're playing a game where there isn't really any difficulty. And yet, sometimes the game is so difficult it feels stupid. It only ever seems like the game is trivial until you're dead. These games have fallen into the unfortunate paradigm of what I call binary difficulty. That is, difficulty on a scale where only two points really exist, trivial to unfair. And very seldom is there anything in between. What I want to demonstrate is that a game's difficulty seems to devolve into a binary one when the scope of character progression or power scaling is too large or unchecked. This visual color explosion of a game is Path of Exile, and although I will be speaking harshly of its difficulty, I actually love this game. But it is the perfect example to use for this binary difficulty experience, because the game always seems to funnel you into a trivial experience or an unfairly difficult one, almost regardless of how strong your character is. Because the scope of the game's defenses is so large, you can get so much dodge chance, so much damage mitigation and regeneration in the form of all of your defensive layers. It means your hit points might rarely go down at all until something hits you hard enough to break through the regen, to put you low, or to outright kill you. Let's make a simplified example. You have 75% chance to evade, you have 50% damage mitigation from all sources, through your leech and regen effects, you regenerate 1500 HP per second, with a total life pool of 5000. Currently, you regen to full at 3.3 seconds. For a hit to be relevant to you, it needs to bypass evasion at 25% chance, then do a relevant amount of damage at 50% damage reduction, 
So either the enemy needs to attack insanely fast through all of your mitigation, still doing far more than 1500 DPS to threaten you. So say an enemy with 600 damage per attack at 10 attacks per second for a 6000 DPS output gets you to 3k DPS after your 50% damage reduction, around 750 DPS if evasion works close to average. This enemy is trivial and it can't really get past your regen. Let's try to find an enemy that could threaten you, but still give you time to interact. Let's say 1800 damage at 10 attacks per second for 18,000 DPS output at your 50% DR puts you to 9,000 DPS, 75% dodge chance down to 2,250 DPS, minus your 1500 regen, and we're at 750 DPS. Still likely trivial, but a few of these could give you a challenge. Now if we take this DPS and we scale it to one attack per second, you have an enemy that seldom hits you, but if it does, it does 9,000 damage and instantly kills you. Again, not very interactive. And this illuminates part of the problem. When your defensive stats are tuned so specifically, it requires a very specific enemy to be able to actually threaten you, but not just outright kill you. When you are able to have such freedom in making defensive layers this good, much of the game will be trivial and unable to interact with you in a meaningful way. That is, until it just kills you. It seems with this kind of defensive scaling that an enemy would need something more contrived like percent health damage to make sure it can challenge you but not just delete you. Although percent damage comes with its own problems, mechanics like these are all a series of trade-offs. If you allow your players to have godlike defense, the game will mostly be trivial. If the godlike defense is this specific with a combination of massive regen and evasion, it creates a perfect environment for the binary difficulty where 98% of the game is now trivial to the point of being unengaging, while the other 2%, the only things that can kill you, can only do so because they likely one-shot you. It is very hard to have an engaging sense of danger when you reach into full in one or two seconds and negate damage completely 80% of the time. Sometimes it seems in these kind of games, a super specific layer of defenses have actually become a recipe that decides the exact type of enemy that you can actually interact with in any meaningful way, and all the rest are either paper or impossible. It's as if you're playing a shooter, but the only hitbox is your head. I would make a small disclaimer in that the character I've created here isn't really perfect or ideal in any way. It's not necessarily defensively strong, and it's kind of offensively mediocre actually. But if I fixed both of those things, it wouldn't actually matter because the element that I'm talking about would actually become more pronounced and that the difficulty would be flattened even more. To put it simply, the better you craft your character in a game like Path of Exile, the more enemies in the game become trivial. And the opposite is also true where the less knowledgeable you are and the more crudely made your character is, the closer to impossible the game becomes. If you fail in Path of Exile and your build is bad, no amount of skill is going to get you through a hard map. You cannot strategize on how to beat enemies that you can't damage and can kill you in one hit. If you succeed, likely from following a guide, your problem becomes now that your build works but it is so good that it's trivial to pilot. An ideal build can simultaneously be essentially immortal and have effectively infinite damage. So your reward for success is now a game made far too trivial. Many say this is simply the genre of ARPGs. It's about power fantasy, not skill expression. The problem with PoE and many games similar to it is that you always seem to fall into this trivial to unfair binary where your character might be built decently such that you can destroy up to a certain level of difficulty, however, you eventually do run into that seldom enemy. Through the scope of character power progression, we seem to have perfectly evaded any hopes to find a satisfying difficulty where you feel challenged to engage with the game, but it doesn't instantly destroy you either. 
This problem is partly to do with game clarity and also how telegraphed or not telegraphed attacks are, but it seems that either way we've made a dire trade here. Imagine you get to the end of your progression journey, the complex interactions of your build reach a perfect balance, each component scaling and working off one another such that no enemy can hurt you and none can survive for more than a moment in your presence. The feeling of completing your personal version of Exodia will feel nice, the gameplay satisfying, to watch enemies that once threatened you now evaporate. However, the novelty of being a god will quickly turn to boredom, as there is no more threat, no more pressure, nothing to chase, and nothing to get aside from the vague satisfaction of knowing that you are very powerful. One of the core concepts of a game is that you can win and you can lose. In this endgame, you have essentially won and are piloting the corpse of your previous entertainment. Maybe this is the fate of all progression-based games. Or maybe there's a way to make games with such scope still engaging. Obviously, there are games that are able to strike a balance, allowing you to have satisfying progression while still providing a threat of loss to the player. Games like Dark Souls allow your character to become very powerful, but most of the enemies can still kill you. You can one-shot a lot of the enemies, but some inevitably still challenge you. This is because in Dark Souls, progression is split into two relevant categories. Stats, or in-game power progression, is one, and skill, how well you can play the game, is the other. Basically, these two types of progression have been tuned differently when compared to games like Diablo and Path of Exile. In ARPGs, there is skill expression and therefore skill progression, but mostly the game is weighted toward in-game power progression, where you assemble a build and then trivialize the game. In Dark Souls, those two categories are switched. The game has in-game power progression, but it is weighted far more towards skill expression. Because the dimension of power scaling is far more limited in scope, the game doesn't ever totally dissolve into a more binary difficulty. If you are strong in Dark Souls, you still have to actually dodge, pay attention to what the enemies are doing, and react accordingly. In skill expressive games, the benefit is that you could theoretically outplay the entire game use a level 1 character and never get hit, and still win. The boss fights start to turn into a dance where the player has perfectly learned all the moves, the choreography of the fight, the telegraph slams that can kill you instantly. All of these things are mostly lost in RPGs. When the scope of power progression is expanded, it in correlation seems to lower the skill expression. If you could get 5,000 health regen per second in Dark Souls, the game would instantly lose everything that makes it fun. No boss would ever make your heart race again. There would be no enemy to threaten you, unless it could kill you instantly, and then we're right back where we started. In games matching this paradigm, armed with the knowledge of how to create an unstoppable character, we would be driven to do so, and it would drive us to destroy the very game that we are playing all of the difficulty would be flattened by a few numbers. I would argue that the trade-off of creating a power fantasy for the player through in-game power scaling and not through difficulty is a failure to balance power scaling with difficulty. Even Path of Exile sought to amend this issue with its pinnacle bosses, where much of the game fits the ARPG example, the pinnacle bosses function more like a typical gaming experience. You learn their moves, adapt, and you can win or lose against them. The moves have generally good clarity and are telegraphed well to allow the player to have some skill expression in a game that is sometimes called a walking simulator. A casual feeling of omnipotence is crumpled by a hitscan bullet instantly killing you. Just the same as the apathy of nothing being able to even threaten you, the problem with that experience is that the difficulty landed on opposite ends of the extreme, trivial to unfair. The game has traded away your sweet spot of difficulty for the sense of power you had. I guess what I'm getting at is I think it is almost never worth it. The whole time playing games like these, I feel as though I'm anticipating a thrill that is never coming, a challenge that isn't there. Then when I die, it feels cheap flat, binary. 
dead or alive, but never really fun. 